Welcome back to Santiago Peak. Today, the plan is uh, get the RF well, mostly connected. And by mostly, I mean, let's get the, uh, the RF going from the transmitter to the coax switch, which I will mount in the back here in the center rack, clean it. I have a, a, a shelf that's over there that I need to also clean. I have my simple green and rags and water and all kinds of fun stuff. So let's get that clean. We can get that uh, the coax switch mounted on there, get it connected to the actual switch controller. And then what we can do is get that RF plumbed to that. And if we have time today, get the second port of the coax switch out to the um, uh, dummy load. There we go. That's what I'm trying to find the words for. So that's the plan. Let's um, let's go. Let's see what we can get done. Ah, welcome back to Santiago Peak. Hey, like my new hat. Picked it up at Home Depot this morning. Hopefully to keep the uh, sun off my face and neck and it's cool. It's actually really lightweight and cool. Anyways. What tarnation. Hmm. Well, it came out from up there. Blown off sometime since the last time I was here. All right, let's drag it out of here. Alrighty, so this is the shelf that I'm going to be using. I'm going to put the antenna switch up here. This is rack three. Not exactly where I wanted to put it, but okay, fine. I basically filled up the other two racks, which is kind of a pain in the butt because all my cable ports are on that side of, of, the, of this whole rack. And so now I've got to run my cable that comes in to the, or goes out to the tower, basically, all the way across over here to this. Because I already nailed down everything on the left side over there. All right, let's talk about one cool device that we have, and that's this. This is the coaxial switch, and you'll see that it has four ports on it, and uh, well, this is uh, something else, but one, two, three, four. Two of these ports are for the two transmitters, and uh, basically you have two inputs and two outputs. And you'll see up here on the top. So you have two inputs, two outputs. And you basically go connecting, you know, uh, for example, and we hold it this way. So it'll connect either uh, port one to port two, or port one to port four. So, and vice versa. So while port one is connected to port two, port three is connected to port four. So let's say this one is our main transmitter. This is our backup transmitter. Uh, this goes up to the antenna. This goes up to the antenna and this goes down to the dummy load. So in this situation, the main transmitter would be connected to the main antenna and the backup transmitter would be connected to the dummy load. So yeah. Pretty hefty, it's got a big motor in it. And uh, yeah, all the control cables. All right, let's, we're gonna stick this up there in that rack on that shelf that I just put in. So I have all the cables here. I'm gonna run these down the back, the back side. So I have power because this thing runs on power. I have status which 
runs to uh, the status panel in the next uh, rack over. And then I have interlock. And these are gonna go into my uh, remote control system down here, which will then go to my transmitters. So you don't wanna be transmitting RF while you switch. So you can't switch your, your RF under power, your coax under power. So your transmitter has to turn off for however long it takes for the switch to turn, and then you can bring it back up. And the easiest way to do that is with the interlock uh, on the backside. Now, interlock is a safety feature of transmitters, and what it basically does is uh, when that interlock opens, then the transmitter goes, uh-oh, something is not right, I need to shut down. Like if you were to open the door on a transmitter, it would be like, eh, uh, no, we don't want you to get shocked, we don't want you to get hurt, we're gonna shut everything down. So that's what the external interlock is for, and in this case, for a coax switch. So it will not be safe for the equipment, mostly, if you were to switch it under power, so it tells the, the transmitter, turn off. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So those need to be hooked up as well. And then, um, yeah, once we get there, once we get that done, we are good to go. Oh, you know what this is? This is, uh, this is a command from the remote control. That's what this goes to. Wait, not that one. This one. This tells, remotely tells this to switch. This is the, the control panel for the coax switch. I just hooked up the coax switch, connected it to this. They're both connected to power. Uh, there's no RF connected to the coax switch. So right down was just a motor flicking back and forth. But it should work. So right now you'll see it's got a little diagram up here. It has a green light showing that transmitter one goes to the antenna and it has a red light saying that transmitter two is going to load. And that's showing you the position that the switch is in. So right now I'm in local. If I were to flip this to remote, uh, remember that remote cable that I showed you that's on the back? If I were to short certain cables together, it would command it to do its thing. On local, it ignores that remote input. Now, I do have a switch on the front here. So if I switch it from A to B, you'll see that it turns red, and then this turns green, and on the coax switch itself, there's like a little knob thing on top. Uh, that'll turn. Takes about three or so seconds to, to make that switch. So now you'll see green, red, flip it back to the A position. It goes to red and then back to green. And that's the coax switch. Really exciting. Now where this really gets exciting is when this is all done and I set up the uh, logic for all the remote control, all I have to do back home is click a single button and it will do all these different things in one fell swoop. It will open the interlocks on both transmitters. So if either transmitter is on, it'll make sure that they're off. Then what'll happen is it will command this the uh, coax switch to switch, whether it's to A or to B, uh, transmitter one or transmitter two. We'll use A or B in this, in this instance. So what'll happen is if I tell it, switch to main transmitter, it'll take both transmitters down, it'll open up their interlocks, it will tell this coax switch to switch to A to the antenna so it'll move the motor and make the change. And then once it's done, after about three or four seconds, then what'll happen is it'll close the interlocks and the transmitter will be able to come up on the air. And, and vice versa, if I need to go in the other direction to say transmitter A failed, we'll go to transmitter B. And transmitter B will, you know, the same thing. Both will go down, uh, it'll make the switch and then both, or both will come up in theory, uh, but what I'll actually have in that logic is to shut down the other one, so. All right, 
Well, it's good to see that it still works after being disconnected for a while. Uh, all right, now to get RF plugged into it, then to get um, remote control and status, and then we should be good to go. Let's cut to the length that I needed to for the new main transmitter. And I have all my connectors. Okay. Now, if you recall the making coax video I did, it's kind of important that we have all the pieces. ones are hiding. There they are. Yep. Okay, so I have all the pieces. I'm going to put them on the, on the table right over here. I need, actually, I need my knife so we can get the instructions out. All righty. Ah. <clears throat> Wait. They have right angle connectors that you could get. I have never seen one. But look right here on the instructions. There's a right angle one. Well, that would be helpful in this instance. We've got to remove this part of the jacket. Come on. There we go. Yay. Okay, cable end. There's a little wording in here that says cable end this way. Cable end this way. So it fits in there. Kind of kind of can see it. <clears throat> on the corrugation. And it says rotate this way. So 12 times. Thank you very much. Okay. Might not be able to see it, but right here, it's a little bit scored. Well, it's cut through basically. Ta-da! It's the O-ring time. O-ring. Now into the sixth one. So that's one, two, three, four, four. Five, six. And I'm gonna need my barrel. Okay, and then the spring o ring. Spring o ring! Sounds kind of funny. And away we go. There we go. Thank you. You'll see in here, there's like a little collar. That'll go nicely on here. Now to pull out the wrenches. I'm going to seal it up. One side down, now to do the other. There we go. Cable's done. Nice. Okay. Make sure everybody's finger tight here. We're good. I woke up this morning not feeling so great and it's starting to catch up to me. You might hear me coughing every so often. But I am calling this a success, getting at least one cable built 
and one cable kind of attached. Uh, gotta clean all this stuff up and pack up to go home and rest. Just, yeah, hopefully this passes quickly. That's it, that's all we've got for today. <laughs> uh, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I had gotten more done, but I did not, unfortunately. Okay, well, time to go home. I'll have to come back up next week and uh, finish this project off with the RF side of things. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this channel. Thanks for supporting those of you who are supporters. And um, if you're not a member, I know there's two of you guys right now that are members, but if you're not a member, consider it at the assistant engineer level because I have been putting up a good amount of content in there um, trying to keep pace with uh, videos that I do here as well as for members. Um, it's not going to be as produced of videos, but there's some cool stuff there. War stories, um, candid conversations I've had with some other uh, people in the industry. And so, yeah. Anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy.